Welcome everyone. We are today here with Yannick Van Duren for our lecture series on electroculture. Today we're exploring the atmospheric antenna, which is lecture number two. Welcome Yannick. Hello, welcome Angela. Welcome everybody for, for to participate to this uh, course about the atmospheric antenna. I'm very happy to share this with you. I, I saw this morning uh, a table about uh, where uh, are all the participants uh, to my workshops and different groups. And uh, I'm very happy to see that it's really spreading all over the world for the moment. <laughs> it's uh, really amazing how to see how uh, electroculture is, is spreading uh uh in 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 uh in the us in canada but also in south america in africa in in australia new zealand it's really uh, in, even in china japan uh um in thailand uh in india sri lanka it's really all over the world now that is that there are people uh becoming conscious of it and um that's also the 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 goal of, of this uh, uh, workshop or course it's to spread this knowledge uh, in English because it's the most uh, uh, um, it's the language I I know a little bit that I can share all over the world. <laughs> so we will begin. Um, so electroculture about the atmospheric antenna. So that's really the first uh, technique that we see in history about electroculture. It's the use of an atmospheric antenna. So uh, it's uh, mostly a, a long, tall pole with uh, made of iron wires or, or copper wires or copper rods. Uh, so it's made of metal. And the idea behind it is to collect the atmospheric electricity from the sky and connect it to the earth. And uh, it seems that the taller we put a, a pole of, of a metal conductor in the sky, uh, the better it works. No? Uh, so we will see how over time, how in history it appeared and uh, and uh, how it evolved um, the different techniques with such uh, atmospheric antennas and we are still developing new ones and, and a lot of people are now experimenting with this kind of antennas with very good results it's also one of the antennas that are the most easy to do available everywhere in the world with uh, local materials too uh, so it, it doesn't need uh, expensive materials to do that. And uh, it's also a technique that gives uh, 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 very good results. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to do and that gives very good results. So it's like a, a basic technique. It's really the basis. And it makes us understand a lot of things that happening in electroculture or around electroculture. Um, so here you see some images uh, from the past about uh, those atmospheric poles on this uh, slide. Uh, uh, the idea is really to, to, to receive the atmospheric electricity. Uh, like you see on the top on the right, there's a, a picture of, uh, of, of thunder. Well, uh, probably uh the 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 science people from the past or researchers from the past uh, uh understood or observed that after thunder after a stormy weather and after uh, rain uh, rain from thunder the plants grow a lot faster better greener and so maybe I suppose this gives them the idea to like uh, collect uh, uh, atmospheric electricity in different ways and to try to collect that kind of life force or vital energy or organ energy or electricity, how you name it, 
uh, to uh, improve uh, plant growth. Now, electricity, like we talk about today, it's completely different notion of ID as the how people talked about it uh, 200 years ago and even longer. Uh, uh, electricity that makes works machines like today, it's, uh, it's only since around two, one century ago that they're really uh, looking for that kind of electricity. But uh, before, uh, they were more looking to electricity to improve life or, to, or for healing devices or also to improve uh, life like uh, plant growth. So that it's, it's a whole other approach as looking to electricity to run uh, motors and machines. Uh, it's, it's a different kind of electricity. When you look to run motors and machines, you will develop electricity or the knowledge of electricity differently than when you look to search for the life force energy that is carried by electricity, like a life force that you see from uh, thunder strikes or from rain from uh, thunder. So it's, it's a whole different approach. But that's a kind of history. Now we will look also to the applications. So in history, we see all the research about lightning rods to protect uh, houses uh, from lightning and, and temples and churches. And also, uh, they did also uh, uh, atmospheric antennas uh, to protect against hail in, in, in agriculture. We will see some scientific principles, some mode of installations, and uh, naturally what we like to see the most probably it's uh, testimonies and results. So in the past, you see uh, the image on top of white, uh, you see like a pole, it's, it was like a wooden pole, and then on top of it, you see like a, a bunch of wires or rods connected with a wire that go to the soil. And now uh, a more modern version is like you see uh, with, uh, with me, uh, just beside it, it's, uh, it's the, like a telescopic pole, in the past, it didn't exist, uh, telescopic poles. It's uh, quite recently in history that it appears. But those telescopic poles make it really easy to make very high antennas, uh, very high atmospheric antennas. And uh, uh, and the highest uh, you make them, the, the better, the more you will have uh, results. Uh, so it's very interesting. And, and it's... They're now a lot more cheaper to do high antennas than 100 years ago, where they used uh, 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 a very heavy wooden poles uh, that they had to, to bury uh, deep in the soil to, to, to make it stable. So it was a wall work. Now it's a lot more easy to do. And uh, like we we seen uh, on, on planet Earth, the on, on the image on the left, well, the planet Earth surface is a charge. It's it's the negative pole, and the ionosphere or the atmosphere is the positive pole. and And we live in a in an um, in an electrical field in between the ionosphere and the Earth surface, and deep in the soil. Uh, that uh, electrical field is around hundred thousand to three hundred thousand of volts. And this corresponds with around 100 volts a meter. Uh, so uh, just you know it. Now, even if it's a very high voltage, we are, we are not electrocuted or uh, uh, electrocuted because there is no amperage or almost no amperage. Uh, so like this, we are not electrocuted, but we live in a high... Um, high intense uh, electrical field. And this electrical field have a, a big influence on plant growth. And when we make uh, poles like this, atmospheric antennas or lightning rods, you, you will um, increase that electrical field uh, above the antenna locally. 
that will stimulate the exchange of electricity between uh, between the the soil and the and the atmosphere and also uh, in the other direction between the atmosphere and the soil now electricity is more than just an electrical field or more than just electrons electrons now today when we look at ele electricity we look also at frequencies that's why i've put that image on the bottom uh, left but we look at frequencies and even in frequencies today we know also a lot more than a century ago uh, you have uh, uh, electrical pulses now you have the intensity of the frequencies you have the the frequency range or, or the 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 yes the 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 wide frequency uh, so in in uh, like from thunder or from the sky you have a lot of different frequencies it's not just electricity and those frequencies change over time and changes also uh, like uh, the frequencies we, we we maybe know about about the schumann frequencies for example on planet earth but you have also cosmic uh, electrical frequencies like uh, gamma rays and and different uh, other frequencies uh, uh, coming from the sky well all, all those frequencies are a kind of electricity yeah? Uh, electricity on itself is, is characterized by frequencies, intensity, and a lot of different parameters. So when we, we, we put an antenna, maybe it can have more effect uh, uh, in, the nord in the northern hemisphere, uh, close to the pole, than at the equator, or, some, or on a mountain, or in the plains, probably. Uh, the effect will be a little different. We see that we have always good effects, almost always. But uh, 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 if we understand that it's about that electricity and that that electricity is different from place to place, we can understand that uh, the results that we will have from place to place will be also uh, different. Maybe uh, uh, huge at a certain place and less at another place. There are also rules to follow. An example, if you have wires uh, above your antenna, like uh, electrical lines or uh, the telephone line, uh, well, it will not work or less because those lines will also attract uh, that electrical field and uh, influence the whole electrical field around. Uh, so there are some basic rules we will see how to install them to have the best results. Mm. Uh, so planet Earth is also a magnetic field, but that kind of antenna will not really work with the magnetic field of the Earth, or only if we put also a magnetic uh, dimension on it, like a, a horizontal uh, mag uh, magnetic rod or a horizontal iron uh, a rod uh, that is magnetized uh, then we can combine uh, two techniques the the uh, electrical receiver and the magnetic receiver if we, if we want here an example of of uh, a little antenna i've put with uh, made of uh, igina spirals and, and fibonacci uh, uh, spirals and and uh, uh, and the idea of an atmospheric antenna um but here i've put also magnetic antennas and basalt and different things so and the, the round tower so it's uh, just an id but uh I, so it's difficult to know which one has the the most effect uh, but it's a combination of all and uh, where i have my rhubarb that is now growing very fast for the moment and uh, here, uh, the record I had was one meter 45 tall. Huh? So I hope this year will be uh, better. We will see. Maybe we will see. It's uh, really growing uh, very well for the moment. So we will see. <laughs> I'm very curious. Here, an example of a drawing 
that I made to explain some scientific uh, uh, um, effects, some scientific phenomenon around uh, an atmospheric antenna. Well, when you see a tree, uh, well, a tree, uh, you will find also all those uh, scientific aspects in a tree. A tree acts also like an atmospheric antenna. And in reality, all plants uh, act like an atmospheric antenna. But now an, atmos uh, an atmospheric antenna will just um, uh, collect or stimulate uh, a kind of energy, but it will not use it for itself. So it will propagate it around. A tree uh, will use it for its, its own growth. So when people are asking uh, the question, yes, but if I have trees, uh, it's enough. I don't need atmospheric antennas. That's not really true because the tree will use that energy for, for himself and will not uh, really help uh, the other plants around with it uh, or, or not completely. It will help too, but not uh, completely. So, uh, uh, but now I will explain uh, what are those effects. Um, on, the, on the rods that are connected on top of the pole that you see in the middle on the image, well, the rods uh, at the ends of the rods uh, or the wires, you will have like points uh, and you will have what we call a point effect. It's that the electrons will will go uh, will will like fly away from the from the rods uh, to to the atmosphere and then it will attract the electrons from uh, the bottom uh, like we saw the the earth is charged negatively with electrons and the atmosphere uh, positively so the there will be a kind of electron flow from the earth to the sky uh, uh, that's what we have the most of the time but sometimes it's it's in the opposite way. So when people are measuring like a voltage with a voltmeter, it, it doesn't uh, mean a lot because uh, uh, that voltage will fluctuate over time and uh, it's, it's not uh, really uh, so important. And, and the voltmeter is not sensitive enough to measure the high voltage without amperage. A voltmeter needs a kind of uh, a minimum of amperage to be able to measure the, the, the voltage. Uh, but uh, now a lot of people don't know that, so uh, um, they just try, uh, and it's nice to do, to try. <laughs> and um, well, um, so the electrons will flow from the, 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 to the sky, through the wire, through, through that point effect that will like uh, attract uh, the electrons to the ends and uh, make those electrons fly away, that will like fly to the, the, the upper sky and the clouds. And then in the clouds, uh, bit by bit, the electrons will accumulate and uh, like to make a rain cloud, you need a balance between positive charges and negative charges. So an electron is a negative charge. Well, and at a certain moment you will have rain or storm or lightning. And this will like recharge the earth because the earth is like discharging electrons uh, continuously through the plants and through uh, the antennas. So the, the cycle of the water will be uh, quite similar to the cycle of the electricity. In a plant too, the electrons will flow from the roots to the top of the plant or to the, all the ends of the leaves, and uh, it will flow to the, the sky. Um, what happens also with the plant is that the water will be attracted by the flow of electrons. And that's what we call electroosmosis is that the water uh, follows the flow of electricity of the electrons it's not the opposite way it's not really the electricity that follows the flow of water uh, it happens too in a certain way but uh, when there is a, a 
uh, in that case, it's uh, electrosmosis. It's really that the water will flow in the direction of the electron flow. And it's also like this that uh, the up or the, the step in the plant will, uh, will rise up in the stem of the plant as through that process of electrosmosis. It's not really through the process of capillarity, but it's more through the process of electroosmosis. Um, so to to uh, to repeat uh, to repeat this, um, so the electrons will flow from the earth to the sky through the plant, and the water the and the sap will flow like this through the stem to the ends and to high up in the plant in the tree. Now this is also the reason you never have to put uh, an atmospheric antenna in the tree or a wire connected from the top to uh, the bottom, because otherwise you will create like a shortcut for the electric electrical flow. And then the electricity will flow from the, the soil through the wire to the top of the, of the plant or the tree without uh, flowing through the stem of the plant. And then uh, you will like shortcut the the, uh, the 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 electrical flow, uh, uh, and uh, and the water the the sap that normally uh, is attracted and flows with the electrons in the stem of the plant. Well, it will not flow anymore because you you have done a shortcut. So uh, that's. Uh, to, to respond to the question uh, why uh, you don't put uh, the atmospheric antenna in the tree, well, uh, that's why, because otherwise you will like take the energy of the tree, and this is very bad for the health and for the growth of the tree. Huh? You can put the atmospheric antenna close to the tree, that's not a problem, but not in the tree, and that's very important to, to understand. Uh, you can even uh, kill trees like this. Huh? It can be very bad for a tree. Um, what else? Um, 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 what we observe is that all life forms, the most, uh, most of them uh, in the soil, the microorganisms, the earthworms, the mycelium, the mushrooms, uh, well, they all like to stimulate uh, the electricity in the soil. Uh, we speak about the natural electricity. Here, it's not about putting electricity from a battery that has different frequencies, different uh, nature, uh, or electricity from machines or electronics. No, here it's about really a natural electricity that will follow the seasons, that will follow the natural um, uh, rhythm of, of the day also. Uh, so it's completely different than putting artificial electricity. Huh? It, the, the atmospheric antenna will just improve the flow of natural electricity huh, in a certain way. It will improve the communication of that electricity between the sky and the earth and the earth and the sky. So we continue. Um, you understand also with that image, if you cut the trees and you don't have any atmospheric antennas, well, then you cut the flow of those of that electricity with the sky. And then uh, you have also less rain because you don't charge the sky with electrons. And the, ele and the sky needs really uh, a lot of electrons to make uh, rain clouds. And that's also important to understand. When we have pollution uh, in the sky, uh, it can be countries, it can be just pollution from uh, cities, from uh, factories, uh, whatever. Uh, also pollution from uh, electromagnetic pollution. This creates all positive ions. And that's uh, quite bad because this, this doesn't um, improve uh, rain clouds. Huh? And when you have less uh, trees, less atmospheric antennas, 
a natural atmospheric antennas, for example, well, then you will have less electrons and you will have more pollution. And so you will have clouds, but no rain <laughs> or a lot less. So you understand the rain that is very important for agriculture is also an electrical phenomenon. And, and, uh, and just in that way, it's very important to have also atmospheric antennas and a, a lot of trees, a lot of uh, plants, and not just uh, little plants, but really trees. So we continue. Here you see another aspect. We, we already talked about the point effect. Uh, we talked about the electroosmosis effect that are two scientific, uh, uh, um, uh, what, two, two, two scientific aspects of the atmospheric antenna. And now uh, I speak about the electrical umbrella effect. That's a kind of effect I, I discovered in, in electroculture. Uh, it's that when we have uh, an antenna like this, or even a tree or a building, it will create like an invisible electrical umbrella that will protect the surrounding uh, with a kind of um, more, uh, uh, more, more uh, negative charge electrical field. It's like you will have, you will put the, the zero from the earth on top of the antenna. Uh, because it's a conductor, and thus will create like those uh, voltage lines, uh, layers, like you see on that image. You don't see it by your eyes, but uh, insects, uh, birds will feel that. They, they, they know about that. They feel that electricity. And, um, and for example, when we have diseases, uh, even a lot of bacterial disease, fungus, uh, fungal disease, but also uh, insect pests, well, uh, on, our, on our crops, uh, they like uh, very ox oxidative conditions. So oxidative conditions, it's uh, when the voltage is higher. So and uh, like in polluted air, Areas, you will have more disease. Uh, well, um, in negative charge areas or where there are a lot of negative ions, uh, you will have a lot, a lot less disease because most of those uh, bacteria and fungal uh, organism doesn't survive in negative charged uh, atmosphere, and so you will have a lot less disease. Uh, it's like the, the bacteria and the uh, fungal uh, uh, organism that are like uh, specific for uh, decay of living organisms, like, uh, uh, like, uh, like in process of rotting. Uh, well, uh, they don't like a negative charged uh, atmosphere. Now, the good the the good microorganisms from the soil and and on the plants that that are uh, specific for healthy plant growth they mostly like uh, negative charge so it's the opposite huh? so uh, that's interesting uh, to know you you see on that image also that the voltage uh, without an antenna you have like uh, every one meter you have 100 fold and so if you put like your antenna three meters high, it's like you, you will capture, you will have the top on, on 300 fold at three meters high. Well, like the top of the antenna will be the zero volt, you will have then a, a kind of compression of the electrical uh, layers. And then it will probably uh, uh, correspond with uh, like 100 fold a centimeter. You will see that also above mountains, above the tree tops, above uh, the pyramids, uh, you will have you will have a kind of high high voltage uh, compression or high voltage uh, energy uh, on the top, and this is also very interesting to stimulate uh, seeds, for example, or, or energizing seeds, for example. That's what we can do on pyramids, for example. Um, so we continue. 
here you see the, an image, uh, how to put your antenna. Well, when you have a tree, um, if you want that your atmospheric antenna works, then you have not to put it too close to the tree. Or otherwise, if your antenna is uh, little, uh, a lot uh, more smaller than the tree, then it will not work. If it's like the same height of the tree, then it will work or higher, it's even better. And otherwise, if the tree is really too big, then you put your antenna a little bit uh, further away. Uh, and I would say like half the, the, the size of the tree uh, or at minimum distance of half the size of the tree. Like if, if your tree is like 10 meters tall, I would say, uh, put your antenna uh, at five meters uh, uh, away, at uh, five meters away, or even uh, further away, um, and so you you will have a lot of better effects. Otherwise, it's the tree that will take the energy and not your antenna. You can also help the tree for growing like this, huh? uh, uh, because wh when you, you will put an antenna close to the tree, very high, uh, with an antenna that is quite high, you will also stimulate the electricity in the soil and you will also help to protect the tree and it will help the tree too. Huh? Even if the tree is also an antenna, uh, putting uh, other antennas around uh, will help the tree. Huh? So it's also interesting to, to know. Here another example, an image that I, that I was inspired from the book of Matteo Tavira, uh, Sacred Mission, where he speaks that the, the birds uh, uh, don't fly at a certain altitude because they have an altimeter. No, they, they feel the electricity. And then he says that before stormy days, stormy weather, then there is a lot more electricity in the air and then the, the voltage is like compressed and then you have like around 100 volt every half a meter in comparison with uh, clear days and clear weather where you have it every uh, one meter. And it's like the birds uh, feel that and then they will fly uh, lower to the Earth's surface uh during or before the storm and higher after the storm they, they will really uh fly at a certain uh voltage and the uh, insects too uh they they will really fly at a certain voltage um and every bird is different they are birds flying like uh quite high on, on the top of the trees and uh, or birds uh, living uh, on the top of the big trees and there are other birds living uh, close to the soil. You, you have uh, a lot of different kinds of birds and they have their um, a kind of uh, electrical atmosphere they need. Because when they, they will uh, fly with their uh, wings uh, and, and the feathers, well with the friction with the air, they will lose electrons and then when they will, uh, um, they will sit down on branches of the plants and, and trees, they will like recharge, it's like they are earthing. They will recharge of the, the earth uh, electricity like this. And this will create a, a kind of uh, electrical uh, stimulus, an electrical uh, stimulation to the plants. So, the, the more you will have birds and insects uh, uh, flying around um, and, uh, and uh, earthing on the plants, well, the more you will have kind of uh, uh, electrical stimulation like this. So it's uh, also very interesting. Uh, now, that, that has to be proven by science for the moment. If, uh, an idea I have with that, but I'm I'm convinced it will be one day proved by science. I'm really convinced that this it works like this also. Here in, in history, uh, you, you see the evolution of those atmospheric antennas. So the, the first um, writings about 
uh, lightning rods, it's, uh, they thought it's about uh, on the temple of Jerusalem in, uh, 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 in, uh, in, in, in uh, maybe in old Israel, um, there were like lightning rods around the temple. And, uh, and then in the year 600 after uh, Jesus Christ, uh, there are writings where uh, they speak about a pope that defended to use uh, uh, kind of poles uh, like lightning rods that were installed in the in the in the agricultural fields. So it's like they knew that it helps plant growth, and the and the farmers uh, put it. And it, it 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 was it was unusual. It was a usual practice to put like lightning rods in the fields. And then a pope uh, decided to to decided to prohibit that practice because he found it was uh, like paganism. It was not uh, Catholic. And then uh, a few centuries later, uh, another pope uh, said, uh, "Ah, you can do it." <laughs> uh, so they so sometimes change of uh, <laughs> of idea. Uh, you can do it, but with uh, Catholic prayers. And so then they authorized again uh, to the farmers to use uh, poles in their fields. So it's very interesting to, to see that it was a very old practice like this. And um, when we read the interpretations of the archaeologists or the researchers, they say, oh, they wanted to protect from a lightning. But uh, I think they were a lot more clever than that. And uh, they, ha they had sh surely also seen that their plants were growing better. And uh, probably they did that uh, to uh, help uh, to increase their yields. Uh, that's for sure, because if, if you like d double your yields by putting atmospheric antennas, you understand very quickly, it's not just about protecting from uh, lightning. <laughs> so if, if it was a usual practice, uh, I don't think farmers would put like tens and tens of atmospheric antennas just to protect from lightning uh, in the fields where they are not really uh, walking yeah? uh, much when there is a storm. And uh, so I, I'm convinced they did it really to increase their yields. And then we see in, uh, uh, we have more like kind of scientific research in the years 1790 or 94, we have a book from uh, Labbe Bertolon that is called The Electricity from Plants. And there is a whole book about this uh, that I found back that you find back that you can find also in French electricity de vegetaux uh, uh, in, in, in France, uh, in the old libraries. And then you see in the beginning, they just put it, uh, poles in the earth, very high, like uh, a few meters high. And then uh, around 1894, they put poles in the earth, but connected with a set of wires in the soil, like you see on the image uh, on top. And a little bit later, in 1921, uh, you have the pioneer Justin Christophe Lowe, and he uh, uh, improved uh, that technique and put the poles like on the south side. And he put also a horizontal uh, rod on it. Uh, and he connected with a wire that went to the north and really in the south north direction. And there he, he collects, he combines like two techniques. One technique is to attract the atmospheric electricity and the other technique to attract the, the, uh, 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 the magnetic earth, uh, the earth magnetic field and uh, energies. And this then evolved to other to the other techniques uh, that we uh, have seen, like the uh, like the Earth magnetic antenna and uh, other Earth magnetic uh, systems from uh, Justin Christophe Lowe and uh, others. But that's then another subject. But we see that the atmospheric 
electrical pulse, atmospheric antennas are quite uh, uh, old in the in, in history yeah? and are really uh, the the first uh, el electroculture antennas. Yeah? yeah, so we continue. So here an image of the system of Justin Christophe Lowe, where he put uh, a horizontal earth magnetic antenna uh, like a horizontal piece of iron that was magnetized and uh, the uh, atmospheric part of it with the uh, uh, directed to the sky his antennas were six meters 25 high in the in the beginning he did it around only two three meters high and uh, but after uh, around 1925 he put it at six meters 25 high hmm. uh, here another example uh, from a scientific uh, from, from a book about the scientific research in the in the 20s and uh, they show uh, an, another atmospheric antenna that is uh, inspired from the one of justin christophe Lou. And they even show uh, an electrical um, a power plant that uh, that collects atmospheric electricity to produce to to generate electricity. So, and they in that book they even speak that they see that in the future, uh, 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 in their logic, in the future we will all use atmospheric electricity with power plants like this. So now we know today that uh, they, it didn't happen, but it's a possibility. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, patterns uh, existing around that kind of technology. It would be really nice to have such uh, uh, to have some electrical engineers uh, working on that principle that we can have like uh, our little balloon or atmospheric antenna that charge up our, our batteries at home <laughs> to make working our appliances and our devices uh, locally uh, it would be really nice uh, so but that's another subject but you see that there is a huge amount of electricity in the air uh, uh, that that we can collect and uh, they can already run motors with this you can see that on uh, there are a lot of experimenters that you can find on YouTube and internet that show that it works. It's, it's very simple. It's quite simple. Uh, here you see experiments from that book, in that German book. Uh, so on top right, you see the field without antennas. And uh, you see in the back of that picture, you see see in far away the field with the antennas on the white well that's the the picture below you see that the plants are, uh, uh, are a lot more plants or the the field is more covered with plants so it's a black and white uh, picture but uh, we see a uh, very good the difference and then the question yes but uh, the plants are bigger but uh, are they also more nutrient dense well yes here you see that the, 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 on, on the left, on the top, uh, they measure the, the, some atoms like uh, calcium. And you see that on the, on the left, uh, the, the, this was with electroculture, they measured 2.6 uh, calcium and on the right, uh, 1.6 calc uh, at the control group. A stickstoff, it's a nitrogen. Uh, they measured 0. 35 in the electroculture group and only 0.17 in the control group. So nitrogen, when you measure it like this, it's uh, the basic, uh, it's one uh, important element to make the proteins. So it's like you will have a double of proteins in the plants uh, with uh, electroculture than without. Also potassium, it's uh, the double, more than the double, and phosphor are sour, so it's a, a phosphor acid in the plants, also a lot more. So you see that the plants are also more nutrient dense, huh? so all, they are a lot more denser also. And that they know already since uh, 1927, like 
Here again, uh, from that experience, the, the plant on the left is corn, maize, on the middle, flax, um, uh, uh, flax, uh, it's uh, for the fibers, and then uh, beetroot, Ruben is beetroot on the, in the middle. Well, you see uh, the three plants on the right or is the control group and the three plants on the left is from the field with electroculture. So you see that when you will put an electroculture antenna, uh, you will see uh, really uh, quite rapidly the results and the differences uh, compared with the control group. Uh, it's, it's not uh, difficult to see the difference. Uh, it's not just about five or 10% difference. No, it's mostly about 30, 50, 100% of uh, better growth. Huh? So it's really um, amazing. Huh? It's really a big difference. So the history. Uh, so I, I spoke already about that book huh, from Labbé Bertolon. And his antenna, he called it the electrovegetometer, huh? or in French, electrovegetometer. Uh, this was in 1783. Huh? Uh, that was even in times in the time where there was still the king uh, in France uh, uh, before they destroyed, uh, they killed him um, before the French Revolution. Uh, and he was really uh, uh, supported by uh, the government in that time. Huh? He, he was a famous researcher uh, in that time about electricity, Abbé Bertolon. Um, and then you have uh, Frère Poulain. Then uh, during around 100 years, there was not much happening uh, in, uh, in France uh, after the French Revolution. A lot of wars, Napoleon wars and things like that. So a lot of destruction. Uh, but then um, Around 1893, we, had, we have uh, the father Poula uh, that was director of the Agricultural Institute of Beauvais. It's a famous uh, agricultural school, a high school or university also today. And they did a lot of research about electroculture. And uh, I have a whole book about uh, him that I found back. And he put uh, the, the antennas like you see on bottom left with the wires in the soil that were also connected to the antenna. And the idea was to spread that energy to increase the area of influence of that antenna. Uh, so, uh, and then they could have even an effect up to one hectare with one antenna of 12, of around 12 meters 50 high. So uh, that was really the, the biggest uh, result they observed. Huh? It's like one hectare with, uh, it's like a radius of around 100 meters uh, around an antenna. Now, I would say that this is exceptional. Huh? Uh, most cases you will have not, not have a such big area uh, as influence. Uh, it will be better to put uh, uh, more antennas on one hectare than just one. Eh? Uh, but uh, that was observed, that, that is written in one of those books from uh, Father Paula. And then now I, I developed, uh, and not only me, but also other people, uh, we all developed our antennas. Uh, um, if you follow some basic rules, you, you will have uh, effects. Uh, so I developed uh, a lot of different kinds of antennas uh, that I will explain you why and how uh, just after. So we continue. Uh, here, that's the book of uh, Father Pola that I back in Russia. Uh, I went in 2018 uh, uh, to the Vavilov Institute in St. Petersburg uh, that I wanted to visit because it's an institute that exists from 1838. And I was thinking, oh, they have an old library and uh, probably I will find very old electroculture documents in that institute, in that library. And uh, I was right because I found this document that is really a very important document. 
that is very difficult to find. And uh, 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 that institute, the Vavilov Institute, is also an institute that collects and protects uh, seeds from all over the world since 1838. So it's really one of the, the, the most important uh, seed uh, libraries in the world also, uh, so uh, to, to know. And, uh, and independent and official. It's not uh, the multinationals that run it. No, it's really uh, from the people or from the governments uh, or the local government. Uh, from uh, uh, the researcher by the name Vavilov in the past. Uh, and it survived all the wars also. It's really a miracle also by itself that it survived uh, all the world wars that we had in Europe uh, since. Uh, so in that book, we see, uh, again, that image uh, in the middle, you see uh, that uh, it's written uh, below uh, that uh, the size was 12 meters 50. The materials he used, he used uh, copper mostly. Huh? Uh, it was uh, 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 all in copper in, in, in that time, uh, that, that antenna. Now it will work also in other materials, but uh, this antenna was uh, completely in copper. So just uh, to know. Uh, now, just thank Christophe Flo, for example, he didn't use much copper. He used more uh, galvanized steel wire. So it works also. Uh, uh, I show you this of 12, the size of 12 meter 50. Because uh, Justin Christophe Lowe, for example, uh, he, he used um, at uh, a high of 6 meter 25. And this is exactly the half of 12 meter 50. So probably he was inspired by the work of uh, Father Paulin. On, on that image, uh, Father Paulin write also that this antenna has a uh, surface influence on our, uh, the, inf the area that it influences is around 250 square meters. So just to know, but in the book is written that it has sometimes influence until uh, 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 10,000 square meters even, uh, but, but that's very exceptional. It's more uh, 250 square meters. So it's, it's uh, very interesting to, to know. Uh. Uh, they they share also in that book a term of an agronomist from St. Petersburg that made an antenna like this and connected to um, to to water with a kind of acid inside, and then the water works like a battery that charges up with the energy. And then when that uh, agronomist wanted to touch the water, he had an electrical shock and he died because the, it was so much electricity that was charged in the water that he even died. So uh, when you make, I would say, uh, be careful if you make very high antennas, when you connect it to water, um, it's better to connect the water also with the uh, earth. So it's uh, earthed that uh, uh, the, the electricity can flow uh, through the water, but uh, uh, from the earth to the sky and the sky to the earth. And so it will not uh, charge up too much, uh, but it will also work to energize your water. That's very interesting. Now, uh, don't be afraid of that. this example. Huh? It's only one example in the whole history of someone died from uh, a kind of experiment like this. Huh? Uh, I never had uh, an electrical shock from my antennas, and I work already with it since, uh, since more than 10 years. So, um, uh, but it's, it's good to know it's, uh, that shows again that we can collect huge electrical charges like this and that we can really uh, uh, use that atmospheric electricity in different ways. Another example, this is from another old book like around 1820s and they made uh, big poles like this with uh, a steel wire and this was to protect from hail hailstorms. Um, 
uh, around the orchards and fields. And uh, this was a lot done in the 1800s huh? and beginning of 1900s uh, because they observed that uh, and now we know uh, in science that the more you have electrical charge in a cloud, the bigger are the hail uh, balls. And the, 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 the less or is the electrical charge in the cloud, the, the, the less big are the balls or, or the hail balls. And so the less big is the damage. So it's the atmospheric antennas will stimulate the discharge of the of the electrical charge of the clouds. And so you will like this limit the the the, the bad effects of uh, the harmful effects of um, of the hill clouds and the hill. You will really reduce a lot the size. So it's very interesting also in orchards and in agriculture where they have a lot of risk of hail to put uh, much of those uh, atmospheric antennas uh, because it will discharge the electricity from the clouds and reduce a lot uh, the, the damage. Uh, here an example of uh, a hail uh, atmospheric, an anti-hail atmospheric antenna that they call uh, the Niagara to, to make reference to the Niagara Falls, that is one of the that were in the past the, one of the biggest power plants in the world, and uh, well, uh, they call it the Niagara Electric, and uh, this was put in the mountains where there are a lot of orchards uh, close to Lyon in in France, uh, uh, in the in the region of Beaujolais, and um, I don't think it's still uh, uh, existing, but uh, it's a region where it's known to have a lot of hail in that region also today. Yeah? So this was in 1910. Uh, another example, really amazing picture. It's, I was so happy when I, I discovered that picture in that old book. That's from a book of 1820 or an image from 1820, where you see atmospheric antennas all over the fields around the village. You see all those antennas. And also in the village, uh, uh, you have also a church, you have also like a kind of round tower, you have a wall around the village, and you have in the fields those antennas. It's uh, really uh, interesting. And um, in that time, uh, uh, electrical wires or metal, uh, you have to imagine 1820, uh, it was really the beginning of the research on electricity like we know it today. Um, well, they made their atmospheric antennas with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a wooden pole and then uh, a straw a, a cord uh, or yes, a kind of cord or I don't know how, how to name it in, in, in English, uh, but it was uh, something like a wire made of straw. And, uh, and this protected uh, the field against uh, uh, maybe hail or maybe also um, uh, uh, as, as a lightning rod against lightning, but probably it was to improve uh, also the plant growth. And then why uh, putting organic material like this uh, to make such an antenna? Well, uh, even wood is also a conductor. It's less conductor as, uh, as, a, as a metal wire, but it will also have certain effect. And it will even have more effect if it's uh, humid. If, uh, <clears throat> and before uh, you have rain, or, or during stormy weather, it rains a little bit and then the wood will become humid and uh, it will act as a conductor. So, uh, if, uh, so it, it will also have effects huh? in, in that way, but less than of course. Huh? So another image to, to, to show uh, the electrical field of the Earth between the Earth's surface and, uh, and the atmosphere. Uh, uh, so uh, 
when we have storm, it's like it will recharge again the 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 earth. Uh, yeah, like we see. Here, other example on the on the antenna on the right, I show like Fibonacci spirals. Uh, you can uh, add uh, spirals on your antenna if you want. And in old books, um, I've read that uh, there were uh, scientists, they put like uh, big poles in the sky with like spirals. And they said that they could uh, measure better electricity like this, because when uh, there was a, a storm coming, uh, the electrical charge will increase and then they could see the electricity around the spirals a lot better than on a straight rod. So that's also interesting. It's like spirals or uh, better antennas to collect that electricity than uh, straight uh, rods. So that's uh, very interesting too. Uh, when we have thunder, and the idea to collect the electricity from thunder or lightning. Well, um, in reality, that electricity, what you see as thunder, is also happening in a uh, in milder uh, atmosphere. Uh, when you have no thunder, you have also that electricity, just that you don't see it. It's it just that it's uh, less uh, intense, and then you don't see it. But it's, it's all also there. And it... Uh, and it uh, it uh, it uh, uh, maybe not always, but it's also there in a certain way. And before you see it, uh, it's it's already there. And um, uh, uh, well, well, every time you have thunder, it generates uh, Schumann waves, and maybe those antennas act also as uh, radio receivers. It's like it's more easy to capture radio waves uh, with an antenna than without. Well, it, it's not just about stimulating the communication of atmospheric electricity. It's also acts as a radio receiver of uh, the Earth magnetic, uh, radio magnetic uh, waves uh, or Earth radio waves. So uh, that's also interesting. Yeah? Uh, to 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 be to do more research about you, you, you can measure it with with devices that measure the the radio frequencies, uh, while well, you you measure the intensity of the radio frequencies that increases a lot during uh, lightning and rods, and you will measure it even uh, more intense close to those antennas. So uh, the, I I did already that kind of experience, um, and uh, it it uh, you really measure it also close to a tree huh? when you connect your measuring device to a tree you can also use the tree as a kind of radio antenna huh? so now it will collect also the bad radio frequencies the electromagnetic pollution but also the good ones huh? and what is important is uh, more that it collects the good ones that will improve plant growth and uh, and health and and this uh, will uh, even more uh, protect more the plants against the bad ones. They will uh, become more resistant, more stronger. Um, uh, so it's it's not uh, uh, it's not because it will collect also the bad electromagnetic frequencies that it is bad. It will also collect a lot more the good ones. Huh? So that's uh, important to to understand too. Um, uh, yes. So here now, how to install. So the, the simplest installation is like on the left, uh, just a pole with the uh, wires and the pole, if it's a metal conductor, like uh, a copper tube or iron uh, rebar or concrete steel bar, it will, uh, it works, uh, it's very easy. You just connect it with a, a bunch of wires, uh, metal wires, it can be, uh, it can really be any wire. It can be galvanized uh, steel wire, it can be, uh, it can be uh, copper wire, it can be uh, uh, even aluminum wires, it works too. I have a, a, a guy uh, that follow me from Africa, 
that put uh, from Benin. He, his name is Maxim. I say him hello if you see me <laughs> one day. And uh, uh, he 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 use uh, aluminium wires because it's the most cheapest in his area. And he has also huge results, really amazing results. So uh, the the to connect the electricity and to make work an atmospheric antenna, it works really and with any kind of metal. Uh, so it's it's important to know that because you can do it with the metals you can find uh, locally in your area. Uh, so and um, so you see on the image in the middle, you can also use a bamboo stock, uh, a, a, a bamboo uh, stick, for example, uh, quite high. Uh, you have bamboos like three, four, five meters high. Well, it works, and you just put a bunch of wires on top. Uh, how many is not so important. You can even put one wire. You will also have effect. Uh, but in as 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 a as a use, we we mostly put like uh, 10, 20, 30, and uh, make a, a whole bunch of wires. The idea is to make a lot of points, a lot of uh, wires that will uh, send out uh, electrons to the sky. Uh, uh, and then you connect it just with a wire to the soil to connect it electrically with the soil. Um, and then you can also do it like on the white and also connect with wires in the soil or connect with any wire that goes to the parts of your garden that you want to stimulate. Uh, you can also connect to your uh, greenhouse uh, structure or connect to the to uh, fences uh, around, around your house. Uh, this works very good. Uh, uh, there's somebody uh, writing that the hedgehog is like an antenna, but uh, uh, maybe the hedgehog will not like to put it on top of the antenna. <laughs> but uh, yes, a hedgehog it's it's probably uh, uh, collects probably also energy like this, uh, like we collect also with our hair is all the hair on animals acts also as antennas. So that's also very interesting to understand. Also the wool on a sheep is uh, is like hair, but that is like curled together like spirals. It's uh, there you have the, the, the antenna as an atmospheric antenna, but also as an Egina spiral that we will talk in other presentations. Uh, spirals are also very powerful antennas, uh, uh, like uh, snail shells. You have also that spiraling effect, um, but it's not any spiral. It's a, a spiral that is like in a cone, like, like you see on on on, uh, on my image, or that that you will see uh, in another picture, I will show you. So we continue. Uh, like here, you see, I've put uh, spirals on the antenna on the left. That's one I, I made, and uh, uh, that's my uh, model for the moment uh, that I like very much, that I improved. But you see the, the three different uh, ways of doing antenna. For example, uh, on the image on the right, you see one, just a bunch of wires that you put <laughs> together around uh, an iron bar, or you can put them in a tube, like uh, in the middle image, or you can uh, also connect um, a steel uh, a rod uh, horizontally, and then uh, you have to orient it in that way uh, with the earth magnetic field if you do that like this. So I will continue. Here, the, the practical way, if you put a, a horizontal piece like you see on the left, then uh, you will connect, for example, the, uh, wire with, uh, uh, to the north, uh, uh, and then you will have a lot more effect uh, in at the north side of the antenna along the wire. If you put the antenna alone without a wire and without that uh, horizontal metal rod, then it will have effect just all around. But if you put it like this, we see that the effect is really a lot more to the north. Uh, on the right, there you see 
the setup when you connect it to a bunch of wires in the soil. I don't do that really because it's a lot of work to put wires in the soil uh, with an antenna. I I I don't really do this. I I prefer to put more antennas. It's more easy uh, than uh, connect to wires. But, but you can do this. Uh, even a fence. You can even put a fence in the soil and connect it to your antennas. It it creates like a grid. If you make a raising beds, for example, then it's very easy to do. You just put a, a wires or pieces of fence in the raising bed, and then you put the earth above it and connect uh, to an antenna, and and you will have really very good effects like this. So uh, I continue. So here you see how the plants will grow. On the right, you see an antenna, just a standalone antenna. Well, then it will grow bigger, close to the antenna, and the further you go from the antenna, the more it will be little to normal. Huh? Um, when you put it like on the left, then you uh, so connect it to a wire. An example, uh, you have uh, the atmospheric antenna with the metal rod and iron ferromagnetic rod, so sensitive, sensitive to the magnetic field of the Earth uh, in the south-north direction with a point to the south. Well, then uh, connect it with a metal uh, bar or uh, a rebar, for example, or concrete rod uh, to the Earth, and then a wire, a galvanized steel wire in that case. Uh, because uh, gal uh, steel is uh, is uh, ferromagnetic, it will conduct the magnetic energies too. If you do it with copper, not sure it will work in that case. Well, uh, then you see that the plants, like uh, the leak plants, like you see on the image, well, they will grow a lot better above the antenna. And the further away you go from the antenna, like uh, one meter further, you will have almost uh, no effect anymore, a lot less. So it will, and this will be all around, all along the wire. Even if the wire is like 100 meters uh, length, it will work uh, on the whole length of the wire. Even if it's uh, a two or three or 500 meter length or, or miles even, or kilometers, it will work. So we will continue. So when I speak about the south and the north in my common uh, explications, uh, it's um, it's just uh, the south and the north, like you see on the compass. That's why I draw a little compass with it, huh? like you see uh, on the um, on the on the images. Huh? You see a little compass. Huh? So it's uh, if you respect how your compass works, it's in the good direction. Here another example how you do it. Um, you can connect with uh, pieces of fence uh, that you put in the soil, like this one. Um, I don't really do in that way because it's a lot of work to put uh, fences in the soil, but you can do it. You, you see this in, in old articles from a magazine in France in the in the 50s and 60s, uh, there is an image like this. Uh, it's the only image uh, of, of that kind of uh, setup like you see uh, on the left. And, um, and then on the right, well, there you see uh, the atmospheric antenna with the fence around. And this is quite interesting. Uh, that you can easily do in uh, raising beds. If you have uh, your raising bed and on the wall of your raising bed, it's a metal, for example, or a piece of fence, you can just put an antenna in the middle and then you have uh, th that effect. And there you will have a field that will be more homogeneous where the plants will grow better in between the, the atmospheric antenna and the fence around. Uh, it will be not like you see on the image here on the, on the right, where with distance the plants will grow less uh, and, and closer to the antenna uh, bigger. Well, 
on this image, it's more homogeneous. Uh, so it's it's quite more interesting in a certain way. Uh, but in large fields, in a, to, for farmers, you cannot do that. But uh, in the garden, it's very easy to do, uh, uh, like this. Yeah. Uh, the fence don't really need to be above the soil. Eh? You can also put it completely in the soil or even completely above the soil or, uh, or half in the soil and half above. It will work in the two cases. It's like it creates like an electrical field locally between the, the, the atmospheric antenna and the, and the, the fence around. Hmm. If, you con if you connect the wires together, then you have uh, uh, the principles like this. Uh, if you connect uh, wires to your fans or to 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 whatever metal uh, piece, uh, well, uh, the 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 best is to just uh, to is is to just uh, wrap them around like this. That you have an electrical connection that doesn't stop the flow of the energy of the of that kind of electrical energy. Like the image on top or left, well, uh, he, uh, it's it's an image uh, reproduced from uh, images you find in the Google uh, about, about how to uh, connect the wires together. Uh, if you don't do the bypass, like you see the the wire that connects uh, one wire to the other. Uh, then uh, you will have maybe an electrical connection. If you put a voltmeter, you will measure. There will be electricity flowing. But if Schuster crystal flow does it like this, it's it has a reason. Uh, probably the energy flows a lot better if you if you do it like this. If 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 you respect and you you make like a bridge in between. Or like on the on the on on the bottom, it's also okay. Yeah? Uh, uh, uh. Here you see how you can connect antennas to the wires that support your your plants, like your uh, maybe your beans, your uh, your trees, your fruit trees, or your grapevines. Well, uh, this works very well. Eh? In the book of Justin Christophe Lowe, uh, like this, he, he tells that he has like 35 grapes on one plant on, on grapevine. Uh, 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 I'm very happy I, I will make a video uh, uh, very soon, I think, uh, because I saw in my greenhouse, I have a grapevine that is only three years old and I have like maybe uh, 40 or 50 grapes uh, flowers that are uh, on it. Uh, I, I never had that so much. Uh, 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 I have two branches on that uh, grapevine and on one branch there are more than 30 flowers uh, presenting. If every flower become a grape uh it's really uh huge huh? uh but uh, we will see uh, but uh, it's already uh it's already a kind of miracle uh, there are so much flowers on one uh, on on just a branch it's really amazing um it's like every bud that begin to grow there are two flowers on it uh, the uh, in the past, I had like, uh, I never saw that so much. But it's one plant, it's one grape where I've put uh, a lot of different techniques. I have the cone, I have spirals, I have uh, uh, basalt, I have uh, different things. So I cannot tell this is better than the other. It's the combination of all those different uh, techniques that uh, made it in a certain way. Yeah. And also the heat of the greenhouse, of course, because where I live, it's around 550 meters altitude, and it's too cold normally for grapes outside. So outside, I have very rarely grapes, only when it's a very good uh, sunny summer and, uh, and autumn, then, I have, uh, then they become ripe. But otherwise, I don't have really uh, good grapes. 
outside, but uh, in the greenhouse, it works quite well. Hmm. So continue. Uh, here you see in my, an image from my garden on the left. When you use telescopic poles like this, like uh, from uh, fishing lines, for example, uh, uh, well, uh, this works very well. You can go like up to six meters high very easily. But you have to then then you have to make an atmospheric antenna that is very lightweight. Otherwise, it's too heavy on it. And so I uh, conceived a, a little antenna like this that is very lightweight for it with, uh, with copper uh, rods and uh, a double spiral. Uh, the, so the spirals, it's not absolutely necessary, uh, but it's a combination with all the technicals presentation and the effect of spirals that are also very interesting um, and so but you can also use just a galvanized steel wire like you see on the image below it's like uh, on that image you see it's only seven euros in the shop uh, for 25 meters or 50 meters i don't remember now it's probably even more expensive because with everything becomes more expensive maybe in your place too <laughs> but uh, uh it's, it's just to 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 show that uh it's really not expensive to make antennas huh? you, you you take some wires and you cut pieces you you put them together and you can have already very good results huh? or you can make them uh, completely uh, or you can uh, bury them or find them completely made also so here you see again uh, that uh, big pole, uh, different ways of making them and the images. Uh, I had an idea a few years ago to make like a kind of cross, like you see on the left and in the middle. And the idea was to hold the, the, the pole uh, in the soil more uh, stable. Um, and to make it easy to plant it in the soil and also to take it away again for for farmers um, and also to have the horizontal uh, magnetic effect because then you put the horizontal part of that cross in the south north direction and the idea was given to me by looking at churches when you look at the church well, uh, the cross is exactly oriented south north. Uh, the horizontal uh, uh, rod is exactly oriented south north, and so uh, and it's on top of the church, so it's like a very high atmospheric antenna that will create also a kind of umbrella effect, like I showed you, and uh, and um, and probably in in Europe. Uh, close to the churches, you had always uh, like the garden, the house of the priest with the garden, the vegetable garden and the, 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 yeah, the plant garden of the priest with, uh, that was known to be very uh, abundant uh, where the plants grow very well. So it, it's probably not a hazard. It's probably also uh, influenced uh, by uh, the, 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 the atmospheric antenna effect of the, the tower and, and, uh, that, and the rods uh, and the, the cross that was made uh, mostly uh, in, in, in metal and that was connected to the earth around. Uh. So uh, that, that that was that that is what uh, given me the idea. I was searching an idea to uh, make it more easy to use for farmers in big fields, and then uh, I needed to find an idea to make it easy to install and take it away again. Uh, uh, so the idea is then you 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 you. You work your soil with the machines, for example, at the farmer, I imagine. Uh, he works his soil. He doesn't want antennas in the middle of his fields at that moment. And then uh, he, he seeds his field and then he can put uh, like uh, 10, 20 antennas in his field quickly. 
and at the end, before yielding, before going again with big machines in his field, he take away the antennas uh, very easily, and he can uh, go yielding his uh, his uh, fields, his crops. Uh, so that that was the idea. And and then a year after, I had a, another idea, even more easy to do. It's with uh, screws like this. It's like a foundation screws in metal uh, uh, that I uh, that I adapt uh, to hold uh, the atmospheric antennas. And then you can make them with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, rebars or concrete uh, iron uh, steel rods uh that uh, are very cheap and for farming then you can like put uh, 20 uh, of them a uh, hectare uh, for vegetable gardens for example of, of uh, vegetable farmers it's it's very easy to do very cheap with uh, very big results even for large crops you could do that huh? uh, uh, but um, you need uh, many then huh? you, you really need many but like it's cheap, you can put many. It's it's very easy to install in the in the soil. Huh? You you just have to screw it in the soil and uh, and and put your antenna in, and it's it's done. Huh? It's really easy. So those are models inspired from the work of Justin Christophe Lowe with the horizontal uh, bar. Huh? Um, those antennas will also work all around uh, in a radius all around but you will have more effect to the north because of the magnetic field uh, uh, receiver or the, the the that energy from the earth magnetic field that you will have also on the wire to the north and it will not communicate will be it that that magnetic energy will not be communicated in the other directions. Uh, in the other directions, it you will have the communication of the electrical uh, field that, okay, yes, but not the magnetic field. An example, how you can do it uh, for your greenhouse, for example. Well, here you see uh, uh, my greenhouse. Uh, of last year, and I've put uh, an, an, a telescopic antenna uh, close to it, and then I connect it to a wire inside, uh, uh, and I conduct like this uh, with a wire inside uh, the greenhouse in the soil, for example. And this works very well. Huh? Uh, you, you cannot put your antenna in the greenhouse, because it will not work in the greenhouse, but you can put it outside of the greenhouse and then connect a wire that goes in the greenhouse. You can even connect it with the, with the structure of the greenhouse if you want. Huh? And this will also conduct the energy all around uh, the, the, in, in the greenhouse. <laughs> This is an image from the book of Justin Christophe Lowe of 1925. And, and here you see how he uh, helps uh, old trees uh, or helps even young trees, any tree in, in, in reality. I did that too. It really works very well. Uh, you will see your tree growing uh, two times faster, uh, bigger, a lot more flowers and fruit and uh, better health. It's it's really very effective uh, and very easy to do. Uh, uh, now in in practice, you can just put uh, make an, an an antenna like we have seen, uh, uh, but uh, with a kind of uh, metal rod. Uh, it's 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 quite easy. Uh. Um, here you see the south north direction. If your tree would be on the south side of the antenna, it will work a lot less good. Huh? It will also work huh, a little bit, but a lot less. Uh, it's better to put it in the direction like he showed on that image. Mm. So the tree on the north of the antenna, if you uh, look at your compass. 
that's a very interesting uh, knowledge or discovery uh, from uh, Martin Carell. She was one of the first doing a science experiment in the in the after World War II about electroculture, um, and she uh, was studying. Um, she was studying uh, pharmacology, and she defended her thesis in on twenty eight May. So it's also my birthday uh, by hazard, by coincidence. Very nice, and um, uh, it's like a little sign of the universe for me. And uh, she uh, and she grew mint and datura. So mint, everybody knows. Uh, datura is a, a plant very interest, in, interesting for pharmacology. They extract certain molecules to heal uh, uh, her problems. Um, uh, and uh, the growth was like 20% more on mint and 30% more on datura. And they, they have also increased essential oil content, uh, so increased nutrients. They had 20 on mint, there was 27% more essential oil content and on datura 57%. And this was made with the uh, antenna like uh, uh, you, you, we have seen the atmospheric antenna with a fence around. Huh? And she planted in between uh, those plants uh, to test. Uh, so it's really a big result. Huh? Uh, it's really a huge result. And this shows that uh, the, the plants will become bigger but also more nutrient dense. They really will be increased in, 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 in nutritious value and also energy. It's not, not only uh, that uh, they are nutrient dense, they have also a more vibrant energy, but that's difficult to measure today. But uh, I really believe that. And uh, that's also what sensitive people tell us. It's really... It's it's really a, a, they have a lot more life force, more vibrant energy, uh, more so, and so the the plants become bigger and also more nutrient dense, a lot more nutrients. This is completely the opposite than than what happens with uh, with uh, chemical fertilizers, for example. When you use a lot of nitrogen, uh, potassium, uh, uh, superphosphates, and things like that. Well, then the plants become bigger, but uh, a lot less nutrient dense uh, and even weaker and more sensitive to disease and a lot of uh, pests and everything. And here with uh, electroculture is the opposite. It's really in, in the good way. Uh, the plants become bigger because they are healthy, because they, are, they like it, and uh, they, they, they are becoming more nutrient dense and uh, and uh, more uh, a lot more healthy. Huh? They they have in most cases a lot less problems uh, or, or any or no problem at all. Huh? So that's really interesting. And also, what happens is that the soil also what you see above the soil that the plants are become bigger. It's also below the soil. You will have a lot more root growth, for example, a lot more microorganisms a lot more soil fertility, and it will not deplete the soil. Year after year, your soil will become richer and richer and more nutrient dense too. It's everything, it's all life that will develop uh, a lot more. It's all life that will increase. Uh, 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 it will not deplete your soil, it will increase the fertility of your soil all over time. And so every year it will increase the yields uh, even more and more because life will develop uh, gradually, will build up gradually in the soil. Justin Christoflo, he speaks that the, the results will increase the first three to five years and then it will stabilize afterwards. So it's uh, interesting to know that even if you have already very good results the first year, 
well, uh, you will probably have even better results the second year and the third year until the, the fifth year. So it's really amazing. Yeah. Um, Justin Christophe Lowe, he speaks that it's like a drop by drop uh, irrigation system. It's like you charge the earth little by little with that energy. You, you have already effects uh, directly, but the effects, the, 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 the influence will grow over time because you charge the soil with that energy more and more. Uh, so that's, that's also why it's interesting even to put the antenna even already in the winter or before the winter because you will charge your soil with that energy and then in springtime you will already build up a lot of energy uh, but um, uh, uh, but uh, um, no worry even if you put it just now you will have uh, very big results uh, quite quickly yeah but uh, 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 if you if you put it uh, uh, as soon as possible it's the best naturally <laughs> so it's interesting not to put the antenna away in the winter uh, because uh, even in the winter it will work it will charge your soil with energy other example how you can energize the water with antennas well there are two uh, ways to do it uh, there's a technique with beeswax where you put uh, two metal plates um, in beeswax with beeswax in between and this uh, will also improve the electricity uh, or the energy of the antenna because beeswax itself acts also like a kind of antenna uh, but that's a whole story to explain this and then you connect it like uh, on the image uh, to the water and the water will uh, build up uh, that energy that you can use then uh, to spray on your plants or uh, give uh, to your plants uh, for watering even after a few hours you will already have uh, you can already have good results uh, so it's interesting to do that or you can also connect it directly to your water it will also work. Huh? Uh, you can also increase uh, the energy in the second uh, image uh, on the right, on the bottom, just to connect it directly to the water. It works also very good. You can also increase the energy in your chicken coop. When you put, you connect the antenna like with a grid. Uh, just uh, uh, under the chicken or where it uh, breeds uh, the eggs. Well, uh, for example, for, for, for the little uh, ch chicks, uh, chickens, uh, normally it, it, uh, the time for breeding is uh, 21 days. Well, uh, when it's connected with the energy of the antenna, you can uh, uh, easy uh, uh, win one day. It will be only 20 days or maybe 19 days uh, for breeding. Uh, it really increases the vital energy and the growth of uh, the chickens and the, and the plants too. You can also connect it with the food and the water of the chickens. Uh, what we, we see also like in winter time is that the water that is uh, energized like this will uh, uh, freeze uh, less rapidly. So it's like, uh, it's like a kind of anti-frost system. Uh, you will gain maybe one, two, three degrees. Huh? Uh, yes, in, if, in, if in Canada, it will be minus 20. It will not be enough. Huh? <laughs> but <laughs> if it's just a few degrees, it's interesting uh, also. Hmm. Uh, what, what I do for my chickens, just uh, an advice. Uh, one day, I, 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 I had a, a water reservoir close to my chicken coop. And in the winter time, to um, to protect it from frost, I put a vinegar, vinegar as an anti-frost, and it worked very well. Uh, it was minus five, no problem. Minus ten, uh, even no problem. And the chickens, it's not if it's a natural vinegar, it, uh, they they don't have problems with that. <laughs> 
the chickens. I, and you don't need to put uh, very much in, in the water, huh? but it worked quite well. I, I've uh, experimented this already. Here you see an image on top of uh, Justin Christophe Lou and his original book, or, or one book that was found back in, in uh, France. I found also one back from 1920. This one is for, from around 1925. And uh, it's written on this, it's written, Augmentation des récoltes et sauvetage des arbres malades par l'électroculture suppression des nitrates et autres engrais chimiques. Well, when you translate it, he, he tells that it will increase the yields and will save the, the, um, the unhealthy trees with electroculture, and it will suppress uh, the nitrates, uh, so the, the nitrogen fertilizers and other uh, chemical fertilizers. So it's very interesting he uh, speaks about those problems in 1925. We have the same problems today in farming industry and agriculture about, about the pollution of nitrates and uh, chemical uh, uh, nitrogen and, uh, and in agriculture. Well, uh, uh, he uh, already uh, showed that with electroculture, he could solve that problem because then you don't need that really anymore. Uh, um, so very interesting. It's like really an alternative to uh, those uh, fertilizers. When you know today the cost of all those fertilizers, and then you look at the cost of uh, those electroculture antenna, well, the the, the exercise is rapidly uh, made or understandable that electroculture is much much cheaper than uh, burying every year fertilizers. Uh, in the farming industry, uh, they were pushed to use fertilizers by governments, uh, corrupt governments, and uh, by the industry and the banking uh, system, because they have all advantage to uh, sell uh, products every year. Like uh, it's like, um, uh, yes, it's like you, you have to buy it every year. So uh, they make a business every year. And with electroculture, that's the problem uh, for them. It's that uh, uh, the farmer just buy it one time and he has it for all his life. And so he don't need any more to buy every year, but he has the result of it every year. So it makes the farmer again free, more independent. An example for one hectare, maybe a farmer will use like uh, like uh, uh, five hundred or thousand euros or dollars of fertilizers. Well, if he uh, buy, but it will be every year like this. After uh, ten years, he would spend, for example, ten thousand dollars of fertilizers. And uh, if he could uh, buy for thousand dollars of electroculture uh, antennas or install for thousand uh, dollars, he could save uh, ninety nine thousand dollars after uh, uh, after after ten years. So uh, you you see that uh, the the difference is huge, and that is why in the past. Uh, the 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 farming uh, the agro chemistry industry and politics uh, were uh, influenced by them uh, to um, to censor electroculture like uh, I didn't talk for the moment about that story but I tell it now uh, uh, electroculture when you look in the dictionary of today. Well, uh, in the most dictionaries, the word electroculture has disappeared. And before World War I, it was in every dictionary. So it's, it's really, uh, uh, electroculture was really a victim of uh, the politics and of uh, the agrochemistry industry that did everything to destroy it and make it uh, forgotten for the people. And now it come back 
to the power of internet that uh, we are here all together now uh, uh, because uh, people are looking and searching and uh, sharing and, uh, and, and, and understand also what happens. In the past, when you had the first fertilizers, a chemical fertilizers, it was like kind of magic. They didn't know about all the secondary uh, uh, pollution that it will uh, bring after. So they, they just bought it and found it very nice and useful. And, uh, and it's only with time that they discovered uh, the, 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 the bad uh, effects. Uh, but quite rapidly, because he just like Christophe Lowe is already speaking about this in that article uh, or on the front page of his book. Uh, but um, uh, you see that it, it was the same problems uh, and that the solutions were already there. Um, so another example here on the image uh, below, it's uh, Lupine. And in, in, in English, uh, yeah, lup lupine maybe, or lupine, um, that, that become very big in my garden. It was like one meter 70 tall and one meter 40 in width and diameter, really very huge. And this was with a kind of antenna uh, of my, of uh, atmospheric antenna that was very close by. Hmm. So here again, uh, that was my raspberries, also close to an antenna like this, that become huge, like two meters fifty high. And I had even a friend that had raspberries of two meters ninety-five uh, high, with a lot of uh, raspberries. Like you see the flower, it's like one uh, one uh, stem uh, had different branches, like it was like a tree. It's like it become like a it, it it become like a Christmas tree with on all the branches flowers and raspberries, and normally you have like a little stem with little branches or no branches at all. Hmm. So uh, we can continue. Here other example of uh, huge strawberries and uh, huge uh, sunflowers. Sunflowers. Uh, react uh, uh, very good to atmospheric antennas. They become huge. Uh, the, the heads of the sunflowers really uh, double or really increase a lot uh, with that energy in comparison to a control group. Here you had strawberries. Uh, that was from one of my uh, contacts or, or followers on the electroculture groups. You had strawberries of 42 uh, grams, uh, really amazing. That was uh, uh, a garden of a friend on the left and close by there was a farmer at just the field uh, uh, close by with corn. And he had, so my friend had put two atmospheric antennas like around six meters high, uh, even more, maybe seven, eight meters even. And uh, you will see, so in a radius of around 30 meters in that field, they had two corns, two ears, in comparison with one ear on the other side of the field. So it's like it, I measured it doubled the yield of the of the corn. It was really huge. Uh, the plants also were more vibrant, bigger. Uh, the leaves were thicker, were uh, bigger in width too. Uh, everything was uh, was was bigger. Uh, that was in the same uh, garden of that friend, also huge sunflowers, tom the tomato plants that you see in front of me, that were very healthy also with very big leaves too. And uh, he had huge results in his garden. That's another friend, another follower of the electroculture groups. He had Jerusalem artichokes of three meters 50 tall close to his antenna, really amazing really uh, extraordinary and then also the 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 uh, like the potato uh, the roots uh, uh, below become also a lot bigger and that makes the jerusalem artichokes very interesting when they have a lot bigger roots it's more deep. 
education uh, to peel them and to and to prepare them so uh, it's very interesting it's a very interesting plant huh? of the same family or close to to the sunflower i just you know uh, sunflowers go very well with potatoes it's a, a companion plant they 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 grow uh, quite well so you can yield uh, the flower and you can yield potatoes uh, under huh? and uh, and uh, Jerusalem artichokes grow also well with them so you can even mix uh, the three the three of them here uh, very nice cauliflowers uh, of a friend he he almost never had such big cauliflowers in his garden and there with electroculture he had really nice cauliflowers uh, that was at, at uh, the friend that had uh, really big uh, raspberries of, of three meter and 95, uh, two meter 95 uh, tall. And he measured very precisely the yield. And he had like nine kilos of raspberries in comparison with three kilos in the previous years for, for, for the same uh, quantity of plants uh, that were in his garden. So very, uh, really amazing. Uh, another example of a guy that had tomato plants uh, growing up to uh, four meters high uh, and he put uh, metal iron uh, rebars uh, like concrete uh, iron uh, sticks um, in his garden with uh, huge results and, and then he sent me an sms with, with the phone because of you look at the difficulties of harvesting <laughs> Uh, he, he never had so much uh, yield and big plants and healthy plants as that year where he began to do uh, uh, electroculture. In the beginning, he told me he didn't really believe uh, in electroculture, but he was thinking, oh, I will uh, try it out in my garden and I will see. And then he did it and he had huge results. He never had such big plants uh, before. It was really amazing. So um, here you see in the winter time in my garden, the same big antenna. Well, when there's no on top of it, I will advise you to, um, to take the antenna off because then it makes you wait. And if there is wind, then it, will, uh, it can break uh, a telescopic uh, antenna. So, but uh, if there's no snow, it's OK. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, that you make a telescopic antenna where you need that the antenna is a lightweight on top of it because it's very high and the telescopic pole is less uh, strong than an iron a rebar or a tube or, or something like this. So, but it's uh, very uh, it's beautiful in the sunny sky, like you see in uh, in my in the landscape around my house. <laughs> so you see where I live. <laughs> nice place so that you see different models you can find on my site but you can uh, also uh, inspire yourself and and make uh, really artistic uh, models if you want uh, for the garden uh, everybody has his inspiration uh, we can put uh, spirals uh, fibonacci spirals uh, balls uh, we can really make really nice things uh. So thank you for listening. I hope I, I didn't make it too long <laughs> this time, uh, but there's so much to tell. You'll find two uh, internet sites of me. My main internet site is the first one, but I have also one in English, uh, but a little less up to date uh, below. And you find me also on YouTube and uh, some social media. And I advise uh, the books uh, you see if you want to know more about history and uh, how it worked. Uh, there are those books in um, in French, but also the book of Justin Christophe Lowe of 1925, you find it also in English. Huh? You find it on internet, on Amazon, and also uh, for free on PDF. Uh, you can find it easily if you put uh, the name uh, on on the internet you find that easily or on my internet site where you can download it or the group 
of uh, electroculture of uh, the course i will put uh, some information uh, just uh, look at the group uh, regularly and uh, i will share with you uh, some uh, interesting information also so thank you for listening thank you to everybody and now i'm ready for your questions <laughs> hmm.